Hello and welcome to the RTS Christmas Quiz 2021. My name is Darren Altman and uh, it's an absolute pleasure to be here. We've got the, the decorations, got the Christmas jumper. We are all in the spirit of things. Um, Merry Christmas, first things first. I hope you've got one on the go too. Mm. Unbelievable, that, uh, that elderflower cordial is going down a treat. Um, I hope you're all well. Merry Christmas. Um, this is how it's going to work tonight. Um, we have got four rounds. This is a Christmas quiz, a TV quiz. Uh, it's just for fun. Please don't go down to William Hills and start putting money on this. It's not going to work. They won't take it. Trust me, I've tried. Um, it's just for fun. So we've got four rounds, uh, six questions uh, per round. And we will have um, a midpoint where we'll have a break and just sort of gather ourselves and think about what 21 has done and, uh, you know, what we're going to accomplish in the future. Uh, it's a total of 24 points. Um, we have got the YouTube chat, which has started already. I'm pleased to say, please do um, let us know how you're doing at the end of each round, what you thought of the questions. Um and before we uh, introduce our first guest, um, I suppose you are wondering uh, what with the whole Omicron uh, thing going on, um, Delta Mark II, it's back, it's better. Um, Darren, uh, if, if you're wondering, oh, sorry, someone's in my ear, yeah? Hello, hello? I thought that maybe that was my conscious. Uh, if you're wondering um, uh, where the, uh, the, the name Omicron uh, came from, then I'll just, hold on, we just got something on the screen. Let me just, yeah. Uh, yes, uh, well, 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 we were, we, we consulted the, uh, the, the great people of uh, Great uh, Britain uh, to, to find out uh, uh, what they the, the thought of the way I've handled uh, this, uh, the whole uh, pandemic and, and the vast Majority of them uh, said that uh, I handled it like a uh, a moron. Uh, so, so I'm, 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 uh, an anagram of uh, Omicron is indeed uh, uh, moronic. Yes, it is. And if there was a second a strain of, uh, of, 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 of of the variant, uh, we would call it uh, Omicron uh, B, uh, which is an anagram of uh, no crimbo. Yes, it is. Uh, so that's how that's how that came about. <laughs> Before we uh, welcome our first guest, um, let's just see how people are doing in the chat and who's who's with us. Uh, JB uh, is uh, they're on their own. Well, oh, she's on her own while the hus hubby is out. Uh, so hopefully she'll know uh, some answers. Miss Popov, Gus Honeybuns, Magic Christmas. There's a team of three in E17. That's sailing about away. E17, uh, good to see you here. Uh, JB, uh, her team is home alone, obviously, uh, in South East London. Uh, Bobby Seagull is there. Hey, Bobby, we'll see him later. Um, yeah. Emmanuel Seagull. Oh. Yeah, he'll be here. Yeah, we'll explain that later. Don't worry. He's very shy. That's all you need to know. Francis. Hello, Francis Ottaway. Uh, she could be home alone too, also in South East London. Uh, Neil Crode is in Droitwich. Hello, Neil. How you doing, mate? Um, Nat M, uh, Team Merry Christmas here in Elbow. Oh, Elbow Cough. <laughs> Just say he's in. No, they're in El <clears throat> one of them. Uh, Kivo X Thompson, SE1, Kevo's flat. Why is everyone based in South London? There's some sort of RTS monopoly in South East London. Uh, Laura Mosscrop, hello, how you doing? Um, gotta get, gotta get through this. Oh, there you go, clever with Louis through. Mm, and how does that make you feel? Yes. Um, uh, who else is here? Uh, <laughs> dog food, la dog food lady. Team Elf and Safety, Oxfordshire. Very good. Um, Nat M, Darren, I'm obsessed. Don't be obsessed. Um, Gavin Inskip. Hello, Gavin. Where do I know your name from? Gavin Inskip. That's a, hmm. We'll have to remind me in the in the chat later. Um, uh, Matt Baker. Hello, Matt. Not the Matt Baker, is it? Matt Baker from the Warnshaw. Um, Ashford in Kent, the Lone Wolf. Is it the Matt Baker? That'll be good. Um, uh, and Michael Wood. 
hello, uh, you're in Staffordshire. So really great to see you all. Thank you so much for jumping on. And we will check in later after the first round. But now we are going to go over to our first. Uh, look at that lot. Wow, that's amazing. Don't they scrub up? See, look at that. <laughs> this is wonderful. We will speak to Tony, Letizia and Bobby presently, but we're going to go over to uh, Yorkshire first and we're going to say hello to RTS chair Fiona Thompson. Hello. Hello, hello, hello. Good to be back How with you, you again, Darren. How are you this doing? Great. This Honestly, it's wonderful. It's like every quarter, you're like the tax man. I have to speak to you every quarter. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you still haven't sent me your money. That's a very good point. How are you doing? And Fiona looking immaculate as always. Yes, it, it's part of the contract now. I am required to wear this. Oh, but, fantastic. But look splendid yourself with your with your Christmas jumper. Festive well, mood. We are really in, I think, you know, as, as I said before, it's it's getting close to Christmas. Um, I've got a few. Uh, are you going to go out with your friends? And, and, and have you got anything organised? Any meals or drinks or... No, keep it very low key. Low COVID key, okay. Sort of thing, just being very, very careful. But this is no, a very, secure, very COVID secure quiz, and there's no cheese and wine involved at all. Yeah, bah, 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 no. Uh, wonderful. This is great. So, um, yes. So, uh, what was I going to say? So, you've got a set of questions. This is round one. Well, I sort I of. Will... Got a set questions but i haven't really because this year we have actually called on the services of so many people that you you'll recognize we've got well i still call vts we've got little films so there's going to be three of us here myself tony and Letizia, who are going to be hosting the rounds on christmas past and we've got six questions that are actually been done very kind of by other people who've been filming them and sending them in to us so we're very grateful to everybody involved. So some some big names coming up. Get ready. So are you ready for the great start? Guests. Abs over to you. Yeah. And just to warn you, although we've called them Christmas past, Christmas present and Christmas future, they all come with trimmings because there are some questions we just loved so much we had to put them in. So over to our first question. And we begin with the fabulous Bob Warman, presenter of ITV News in the Central Region. Over to you, Bob. Ten years ago, what was the highest rating programme in 2011? There we ah. go, Bob's question. So, what do you think, Aaron? Do you know this one? What, what was the highest rating programme of 2011? Do you know I what? I can't even remember uh, what I was doing. Uh, no. Oh, by the way, have we got clearance for this music? It's all been clear, isn't it? <laughs> 2010 years ago, would it have been X? No, I don't know. Britain's, I don't know. Hmm. Da, 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 da. Ah, well, let's ask, let's ask Bob to tell us what the answer is. The royal wedding of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge. There we go. There 26 go. million across 10 channels including BBC One, ITV and Sky News. Did you watch it, Darren? Do you know what? I think I did. Yep, I definitely did. Yep, we all, we, we were all, we all watching it and may have even shed a lone tear, Fiona. Yep, I'm with you on that. I'm with mm. you on that. Right, should we go on to the next question? Hope you managed to get that one. 2010, uh, well, no, I'm making that up, wasn't it? Wasn't it? it was the Royal Wedding of the Duke and Duchess of Cambridge in 2011. So the next question, I'm a big Cory fan, so I'm really pleased that Sherry Lee Houston is asking our next question, because as well as an actor, Sherry Lee is behind the Manchester organisation Triple C, which acts as a gateway for disabled people into the TV industry. But here's the question. Hello, everyone. Merry Christmas. Now, if you're a Cory fan, you might probably know this question. If not, woo. Um, what year was my character Izzy Armstrong's first Christmas? So there's a tricky one. In what year did Izzy Armstrong spend her first Christmas in Weatherfield? Are you a fan, Fiona? 
I love Cory, but I'm always behind. I'm always behind. I caught up last week, and now I'm behind again. How about you? No? Yes, I no? The, I think the last time I saw uh, Coronation Street, Albert Tatlock and Ina Sharples were drinking in the pub. <laughs> <laughs> that was just last week, then. You haven't missed much. It's still, still going on. Okay, Sherry Lee, give us the answer to that question. The answer was 2010 was the first year that I made my entrance as Izzy Armstrong in Coronation Street, so that was the year I had my first Christmas. Ah, uh, fab. Wow. Hope you got that one. It's great. You... It's great. I mean, Coronation Street at the moment, I think, is really, is really fantastic. And, of course, we've seen the Battle of the Soaps in I'm a Celebrity just recently with EastEnders, Emmerdale and, and Corrie, all represented there. But, and then Emmerdale yep. came through. Good Yorkshire show there. <laughs> so, Darren, I'm wondering if you would like to introduce the next Quizmaster. Do you know, I'm, I'm, I'm really excited. Um, uh, oh no, you've, got, you've got another one, Fiona. You're not going anywhere. No, no, I think you've got the next one. Oh, right. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, <laughs> so I'm a huge fan of this guy. And uh, uh, being an impressionist, I just think he's absolutely wonderful. Very funny man. Uh, very politically engaged. Uh, and here is the guy that does m the voice of Boris on Spitting Image, uh, the great Matt Ford with our next question. Thank you very much, Darren. It's a pleasure to be here today to be asking a question at this illustrious quiz. Um, I don't think that I've not made an effort, by the way, that I'm one of those lazy comedians who just sits around in his tracksuit all day. That could not be further from the truth. Ta-da! I made an effort for you guys because I respect the entertainment industry. Here's the question. Spitting Image has just finished its second critically acclaimed series on BritBox with Roger Law once again behind the creation of its iconic puppets. But which of his original co-creators first pitched the show back in 1981? Darren, I've got to say I'm a huge fan of your Boris Johnson impression. It'd be remiss of me not to, uh, not to, not to, uh, do a bit of mine today. It's, it's, it is a great honour indeed to be here at the art, the, the art, yes, the, uh, was the, the regional testicular society. And uh, I, 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 I don't, don't worry, I, I will deny all knowledge uh, of, of ever being here, uh, of any knowledge at all of this online shindig. Uh, and instead we'll watch idly by as you all have to resign from your positions in tears. <laughs> oh, thank you, Matt. That's it's it's all the hand issues and the absolutely brilliant. So, um, yes, well, let's let's repeat that then, shall we? Uh, it's just finished its second series on BritBox with Roger Law once again behind the creation of its iconic puppets. But which of its original co-creators first pitched the show back in 1981? And your time starts now. I was a huge Spitting Image fan. I don't know where Fiona's gone. I used to record it on uh, at 10 o'clock on a Sunday night and then watch it on a loop on VHS until it was on uh, next Sunday. Oh, I loved it. It was. It was fabulous, wasn't it? I mean, it still is. But, you know, those iconic characters uh, and the, the market yeah. the way they use the lamp would be fabulous. I know. Uh, and the answer is, Matt? And the answer is, of course, Martin Lambie Nairn. Thank you very much and good night. <laughs> it's almost like they're down the line, isn't it? It's almost like they're live with us. Let's pretend they are. Oh, do you reckon we could get away with it? I think we could. You can get away with anything at the moment. You can get away with all kinds of lies at the moment. Yeah, Oops. yeah, yeah. Yeah, anywho. So that's Martin Lambiner and then, and thank you to Matt Ford for, for that question. Now, we bring you someone who really needs no introduction, but I'm going to anyway, the wonderful Fred Dynage. Now you might ask, how? I hear you say, well, by VT. The wreck of the Mary Rose, Henry VIII's famous flagship, sits in the historic dockyard at Portsmouth. It was indeed built in the city, but do you know when it was raised from the seabed? When was it raised from the seabed? So when was the wreck of the Mary Rose, Henry VIII's famous flagship, raised from the seabed? Now you might be asking yourself, how relevant is this to Christmas? 
Well, probably because Henry VIII had a lot of Christmases, and some of those might involve the Mary Rose. But it's also because who could deny Fred Dynage? Your 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 sounds a little bit dodgy. The the connection, Fiona. Hopefully, we'll we'll get you in. Okay, so let's uh, uh, repeat Ooh. the question. With when was the wreck of the Mary Rose, Henry VIII's famous flagship, raised from the seabed? Go on, let's see if we can hear you again. Yeah, can you hear me? Is that better? Yeah. Any better? Good. Sorry about that. You missed that that joy that I was speaking. So, Fred, are you going to give us the answer? Well, it sank in 1545, but the answer you want is it was raised in 1982 as the world watched on. 1982. Oh, <laughs> not quite the right answer there. <laughs> 1982. Oh, no. Nobody saw that one. That one pop up. There we Do go. you know what? <laughs> What? I I remember I rem I vaguely remember that actually as 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 a kid I know I know it was it was um uh, we all we all studied it and uh, discussed it at school as a young boy I remember yeah yeah makes sense no no I remember it I remember it being brought up um but I was a yes I was a grown up by then so that just shows you know different experiences we've had different ex and what a legend thank you so much to Fred Dynage the legend that is Fred Dynage. Oh, how to for us younger ones, says, uh, is that Neil? Neil? Yeah. Coming up with that? Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. How still going, still going strong. How? So, Darren, do you want to do the next question, uh, introduce the next question, or do you want me to do it? Um, go on, Fiona, go on. All right, then. Well, we're going back to the Midlands, where I was born and bred. This time it is Matt Teal, presenter of ITV News Central. Over to you, Matt. Which former EastEnders actor played Eddie Scrooge in an ITV adaptation of the story that first aired in the year 2000? Thank you, Matt. So which former EastEnders actor played Eddie Scrooge in an ITV adaptation of the story that first aired in the year 2000? All those years ago. Hard to believe that's 21 years ago now. Unbelievable. It really is. I used to be... Uh, you said that you love... Um, uh, Coronation Street. I used to be an EastEnders nut, and I could name you the real names of a lot of the. I still remember, for some bizarre reason, that sh that Deepak Verma and Shobu Kapoor played Sanjay and Geeta. Why? I don't know. For moments like this. For moments like this. Yeah, moments <laughs> like this. And let's just hope they didn't see that little answer flip up just a moment ago. So, oh. Matt, give us the answer. And the answer is Ross Kemp. Uh, Ross, can I just uh, Ross and, and and just in case there's an emergency, you know, such as this, then uh, then what you do, you put on your bald cap, you raise one eyebrow, and then you're Ross Kemp, and you have to make sure that everything you say is in this tune. Welcome to Britain's deadliest online quizzes. Uh, you know, and that's brilliant. It, it was like I, it, for a moment there, I thought he was in the room. I thought that was a surprise that Phil had organised for tonight, but no. More like Martin Kemp. <laughs> <laughs> the deadliest quiz. Yeah. That's it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Well, this is this is my last question coming up now of this of this round, and uh, again, we're going back to the Midlands. Oh, I love the Midlands, but this time we're with the BBC, and it's the Fab Nick Owen. Hello everyone, it's Nick Owen here from Midlands today and I'm going to put your television knowledge to the test. Here is the question. The clothes show was created from a recurring feature on which BBC daytime programme? So there we go. My last question from the wonderful Nick Owen there. The clothes show was created from a recurring feature on which BBC daytime show? And the time begins now. Another legend. We've got, we've got we've got no expense spared here. Another the legend that is Nick Owen. Wow. Exactly. Yes. And I remember this program. I remember it well. 
and I remember the studios. I, I'm not sure the studios are still there at Pebble Mill. Somebody in no. chat will tell me whether they are, but I think they've gone, haven't they? Probably turned into a pret a manger or something. But yeah, I remember it as well. I, yeah, remember it, remember it. And he, of course, uh, GMTV was it? Good Morning Britain, wasn't it? When it when he, yeah. when he first started, 1982, I think. Yeah. Okay, so give us the answer, Nick, because I've probably just given it away anyway. <laughs> well, the answer is Pebble Mill at one. Pebble Mill at one. Don't be hard on yourself. I know it's a long, long time ago, way before my time. Don't worry if you weren't quite sure. <laughs> Thank you, Nick. Pebble Mill at one. Didn't that have... Who, who was the jazz band? Was it Kenny, Kenny Baker it or something? It jazz Kenny band. Baker or yeah, Kenny Baker or Kenny Ball. I think you're right, Kenny. Kenny Ball, that's it, Kenny, Kenny Ball. Ball. Yeah. And who else presented that? Um, Alan Titchmarsh and Judy Spires. Oh, Gosh. my word. Yes. Awesome. Uh, it's time for me to go and have a lie down now. So it's time for me to say thank you very much, Darren. And thank you so much. Good everybody. Been... Keep going. It... It's so lovely to see you. Thank you for your jacket and thank you for uh, being an excellent uh, host. So there you go. That is the end of round one. And uh, we're just going to take uh, a short pause and see how you are doing in the chat. Could you, um, uh, so there were six points in that round. Uh, if you could write out in the, the chat uh, how you're doing. Oh, Nat says five out of five. Is it five? Five? I thought it was six points. Five? Uh, Matt um, says five out of five uh, so far. Trish is here. Trish Bertram, uh, another TV legend. She used to be the uh, uh, voice and the continuity, both uh, uh, live uh, and in vision for LWT. Lots of love. Um, Ros Rosie Mansfield, what's she saying? Uh, Line Nat Morris? I don't know what that means. Um, how are we doing? How are we doing? How are we doing? Jessica says, I got that one. Yay. Uh, Kevo X Thompson is doing well. So Neil Crow, two out of six. He says, so poor. But, you know, you, you're here and you're turning up, Neil. JB got three out of six. Uh, Ms. Popov got four out of six. Congratulations to the Gus Honey Buns. James only got one. So, you know, could do. Maybe that's something for you to go away and think about, James. You know, uh, Carol. Keely says, not percent, but enjoying it. Well done. Oh, thank you so much, Carol. That's great. You'll get something in the next round, I'm sure. Uh, and there's Fiona. So lovely to see her. And so, so nice to have all of you in the, in the chat. I think we should move on to round two. That was the uh, quiz of Christmas past. Now we're moving on to the questions of Christmas present. And um, I've got another special guest uh, co-host. Um, and uh, uh, we're going to say hello to Tony, um, who is uh, the Tony Campbell, the RTS East Chair. How are you doing, Tony? I'm all right, Darren. How are you? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. Isn't it amazing to, to think that a whole year has passed since we sat and did this last? Was, amazing. Was it a year? Was it a year that yeah, you were here? We, my yeah. word. Yeah. And a little birdie tells me, well, it's not really a little birdie because you did show us, just like, and this is going to be a logistical nightmare for you, but just like Fiona was wearing her TV jacket, do you have yeah. something on your, what are you, what you? Yes. Yeah. I, I thought that might have been a mistake when we were talking earlier. Okay, stand, <laughs> by, stand by, everybody. Oh. There we are. Where are they? There we are. Test guard that socks. Is, that <laughs> is dedication. That is absolutely yeah, I know it doesn't, it doesn't quite, thank you so much. It doesn't quite match Fiona's um, effort, does it? But, you know, every little helps, as someone said once. Do you know what? In some respects, it's a lot better. I wouldn't say that to Fiona's face. Uh, I love her like mm. a sister, but uh, I just think She's that, gone that, now. She's gone. that Yeah, that, that, that's special. Your RTS socks, amazing. So you've got, mm. you're, you're doing the questions for Christmas present. You're introducing the guest. Should, do you want to take it away? Why not? Why not? I've got a clue for you as to who our first contributor is. All right. Are you ready? Go on. Go. Da, 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 da. Da, da. Is it, da. Is it Jaws? I've started, so I'll finish. I've started, so I'll finish. Da, 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 da. Da, da. Oh, I can't believe Myron. it. 
It's Clive Myrie. Hello, everyone. Clive Myrie here, just taking a break out from Mastermind to ask you a Christmas quiz question. Which actress who starred in the high school musical films reprised her roles as Stacey DeNovo and Lady Margaret Delacourt in a Christmas film recently released on Netflix? Ah. Well, there we are. Which five, former high school musical actress will reprise her role as Stacey DeNovo and Lady Margaret Delacourt, Duchess of Montanaro, this Christmas on Netflix? You into high school musical, Darren? Um, do you know what? By proxy, my, my my girls have got all. I think it's three now, and and maybe a couple of spin-offs. So yes, I, I am familiar with the genre. What about yourself? Yeah, I, again, two girls. So Zac Efron posters and and stuff like that. I'm, I'm I'm it was a while ago now, but I'm sure I'm sure that they were they were well into it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Touching yeah. schools. So he's co-starring that. Yeah, my my eldest had uh, had a Zac Efron uh, Christmas calendar a few years ago. Ah, oh, those were the days. Anyway, go on. <laughs> should we get? Should we get the answer? Let's get it from Clive. It is Vanessa Hudgens, and the film is The Princess Switch Three. There we go, Princess Great. Switch Three. I can't say I've seen it. No. And uh, and big thanks to Clive Myrie and uh, and our booker. I mean, this is this is. I mean, every year, you know, we go up and up a level. I mean, like, I'm just looking forward to next year when he says when we go over to our next judge, uh, our next quiz master, Tom Cruise is going to join us to ask a question about uh, I don't know, Cracker Jack or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I don't know if you see, you saw in the chat, but it's not that Matt Baker, but it is a TV personality Matt Baker in that he was on the tournament a week or so ago. I think it was. I remember seeing it. And did a very, oh. uh, a very flamboyant entrance onto the run, using his his fan. So oh. you know, maybe maybe he's a future a future contributor for us. Who knows? Fantastic. Um, next question: Should we do that? Yeah. So this is someone from my neck of the woods here in the east. Um, this question comes from Becky Jago. Hello, I'm Becky Jago and I present the news for ITV News Anglia. But which long-running children's BBC programme did I used to present? There we are. So which long-running children's BBC series or show did Becky used to present? Hmm. She's a good friend of ours at the RTS here in the East is Becky. She's, uh, she's um, done our awards presentations the last two or three years that we've done them um oh, fantastic. and uh, yeah she's she's really good to us so um it was lovely to have, lovely to have her do that for us really good that's great it's uh yeah it's interesting seeing all the presenters for the different regions obviously i'm based in london so i only know here but it's lovely to see uh have a little glimpse around the country marvelous yeah and that's your time's up so which long long running bbc tv program did becky joe go used to present let's hear from her and the answer is news round and again Wonderful. when my kids when my kids were that age you know it was becky on in the afternoons on bbc one all oh, right fantastic news see for round. me it was john craven yeah well i think it was for me actually to be honest we're probably not that dissimilar in age i wouldn't have thought yeah yeah um so yeah um now, you said you like to see weather presenters, uh, sorry, regional presenters. So we've got a we regional weather presenter for you next, Darren. So just to keep Great. you happy. <laughs> um, so uh, this time it's Des Coleman, um, who's a weather presenter for IG News Central. So let's hear his question. Which ITV detective drama filmed an episode in a recreation of Jerry Anderson's studio that made Thunderbirds? There we are. Uh -huh. So again, our, our era, perhaps Thunderbirds. Little bit before. No, it was it was on? Yeah, they repeated it. Yeah, yeah. As with um, Thunderball and all, all the Jerry Anderson things. Yeah. Yeah, we've given them a little bit of extra time there. So let's start the clock and I will remind you of the question. Which ITV detective drama set in an episode, uh, set an episode in a recreation of Jerry Anderson's company that made Thunderbirds? 
There we go. So, what was your favourite Thunderbird? Oh, well, as in uh, as in character. Character or. Machine? I just remember Parker. Yes, my lady. Always, yeah. always spoke like he needed a lodging, my lady. Yeah. Yes, he did. Yeah. <laughs> I like Thunderbird too. Ah. Oh. And here's a fun fact. Did you know that the um, <clears throat> David Graham is his name? He also voiced uh, Grandpa Pig. <clears throat> Grandpa Pig? Like, yeah, that's, uh, the guy that um, voiced Parker, the original yes. Parker, uh, yes. voiced uh, Grandpa Pig in Peppa Pig, sorry. Oh, in Peppa Pig. Oh, okay. In, in Peppa Pig, yes. Hello, Peppa! Yeah, that was him. Did your mate Boris tell you that? No, I'm just lonely. <laughs> <laughs> I see. Okay. Um, we haven't had the answer, have we? So let's find out um, from Des what the answer is. The answer Endeavour. There we are. Endeavour. Fantastic. I, can't say I've, I don't think I've seen that one, I have to say. Um, thank you to whoever's in the chat. Uh, Kevo. Kevo? Kevo, I guess. Kevo Thompson. I could do a mean impersonation of John Richardson. Not sure how to take that. Is that a compliment? Get him on. Get him on. No, <laughs> from it, from, yeah, it might be. It might be. <laughs> I'll, I'll work on it. I'll see what I can come up with for next year. Fantastic. Um, yes. Um, okay. Another question then. Um, this one, it's uh, Shirley Houston again um, from Corrie. Uh, no, sorry, it's not. I beg your pardon. It's her friend. Uh, Shirley Houston from Corrie and Triple C. Uh, we've got her friend and colleague, Melissa Johns, with this question. So Corrie are being nice to us this year, aren't they? I have the pleasure of playing Miss Scott in ITV's Grandchester alongside the brilliant Robson Green. But what is the name of Robson Green's character in the series Grandchester? There we are. So who does Robson Green play in Grantchester. Start the clock. That's, uh... Do you watch Grantchester? <clears throat> I can't say I do, but I did ask a question about it on, on this quiz last year, actually. So... Right. Perhaps I should have watched it. But, uh, but no, I, I, I don't. But I do know this, this actor. Very famous yes, actor. Yes, yes, yes. What was the um? What was the song that he had the uh, the big number one? Uh, Robson and Green. What was uh? Yeah, what was their that's song? it. You're you're, you've given the answer away, but it was on the zero, so I think we're okay. Oh, we're okay. <laughs> no, no, go on, go on. Um, no, no, I, I, oh no, Robson yeah, Green. Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah, okay. No, it's me being an idiot, not you. It's all right. It's fine. I'll take that on the chin. Um, Unchained Melody, wasn't it? Yes, Unchained Melody. Well done, well done. That's a big one. Okay. Shall we find out what the answer is? The answer is Geordie Keating. Okay, Geordie Keating. Wonderful. I have to file and that away so, somewhere. Uh, I think this is the second to last question in this round, I think. And uh, we welcome back TV legend... Fred Dynage. Are you there, Fred? 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 Frederick? Oh dear. The Marvellous Mrs. Maisel, a period comedy drama streaming on Amazon Prime. It'll return for a fourth series in 2022. What is the name of the club where Midge first tries her hand at stand-up? The name of the club. Right. Could li could listen to that voice all day. So you've got 30 I seconds know. starting from now. So I haven't I, seen um, this one either. I've, I've read a lot about it. It's, it's, it's on my list, I think. I saw the first couple of, uh, I was going to say series, seasons. Uh, brilliant. Incredibly well written, beautifully acted. Um, and I've forgotten her name, the lady that does Lois in Family Guy. What's her name? She's in it, and she's tremendous. It's a fantastic series. It's great. 
And with that, Fred, uh, the answer... Oh, let's uh, read it one more time for you. The marvellous Mrs. Mazer will return for a fourth series. What's the name of the club where Midge first tried her hand at stand-up? And the answer is... Name of the club where Midge first tries her hand at stand-up. Answer, the Gaslight Cafe. The Gaslight Cafe. Well done if you got that right. Fantastic. Here we go. I and, look forward uh, to, to seeing her first go at it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. It's, it's really, it's really, really great. It's really good. How are you doing in the chat? I'm just looking. There's lots of chat. We'll catch up with the uh, the chat at the end of the, this round. But thank you for uh, commenting. It's great. Okay, this is my last question, I think. Question number 12. Um, now you can bet the snowman is going to be back on telly for Christmas this year. Um, but Yorkshire vet Peter Wright has a tricky question about it for you. Let's hear it from Peter. Christmas wouldn't be Christmas without Raymond Briggs' classic animated television film, The Snowman. But in which year was it first broadcast on UK television? That's a tricky one, isn't it? I, I, I'd have a stab at this. I'd have a stab. Yeah, definitely. Mm -hmm. So in what yeah. year was Roman Briggs' classic animated television film, The Snowman, first broadcast in the UK? That's the question. Let's have a timer. It's so one of how's, those. How's your Ali? Jo how's your Ali Jones then, Darren? We're walking in the. Uh, um, it's one of those that as soon as you hear that introduction and the snowman taking flight, it it gets me every time. Even as a grown man, you know, it just oh, it's it's incredible, isn't it? Yeah, it is really good. Uh, you know, it, it's one of those things that um, although it's on every year, you know, it doesn't get doesn't get old, does it? No, oh, no, no. Um, so what year? The Snowman, first on television. Um, let's find out again from Peter. The answer is 1982. 1982. I'd, I probably would have said 1982. I think 1981 too, maybe. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Uh, listen, Tony, thank you so much. It's lovely to see you again. Um, You're very welcome, and, and you. Thank you, thank you for, honestly, it's great. And thank you for the for the effort of the socks that didn't go on. I hope you didn't mind me highlighting, but I just think it's attention to detail that needs really, you know, drawn to and uh, and applauding. So, thank you. I'll try and find a, another item of clothing for you next year. That's amazing. Thank you so much. Uh, and we say goodbye to Tony. We'll speak soon. Yes. See you. And now let's see. Ah, oh. uh, 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 it's Hello. um, it's uh, Brontosaurus, Brontosaurus. Yeah, Bob, not now, Bobby. Yeah, I, I appreciate you keen. You look great. Let's we'll, we'll, we'll see your rounds a little later. But thank you ever so much. Oh, okay. He's keen, and that's what we like about him. You know, he really is keen. Um, let's see how you are doing. So that is two rounds down. That's the half uh, way. Uh, of the quiz. So let's check in. Uh, Carol. Hello, Carol. Carol Keeley. Uh, I'm going for half a pint too with Vanessa from question one. Need it. Right. Okay. Um, five correct in this round. Kevo Thompson. Really? That's amazing. Um, where are we? Uh, Jessica. Uh, sorry, that was, that's uh, Alex Borstein. Thank you. Uh, Keone, Alex Borstein voices um, Lois from Family Guy. Uh, you don't get an extra point, but thank you ever so much. Um, how is, if you could all write down in the chat, uh, Trish says she got three out of six, needs some more ITV questions. Yeah, I get where you're coming from, Trish. But, you know, oh, JB, not out of six. I nearly put 82 and then changed it to 88. Oh, JB, trust yourself. Trust yourself. Go with your first answer. Uh, Mrs. Popov uh, and Gus Honeybuns got six out of six uh, with a total of 10 out of 12. Wow. They are some serious TV quizzes. Gus Honeybuns, amazing. Uh, uh, Trish says the snowman was part of Channel 4's first Christmas on air. Oh, there you go. See, this is what we like. We like, we like we're all geeks here, you see. The more we can geek out, the better. I love it. 
Uh, thank you, Trish. Uh, Jessica got one and a half out of 12. I don't know why you're giving yourself half marks, but uh, it's still all to play for. It's still all to play. Matt only got two again that round. Uh, Daniel Danielle Davis, five for this round, so six in to total. Fantastic. And Kevo uh, also got five. Um, and one last one for this round, Neil Crowed, six out of 12 so far. So that's great. So we've been to Yorkshire. We've been to the Midlands. Uh, we've had Christmas past. We've had Christmas present. And now we are taking a trip into Christmas future. And we are going to chat to London's finest, Letizia Lee. Hello, Letizia. Hello, hello, Darren. It's good to see you again. It's great. You're looking fantastic, looking very festive. How are you? I think my festivity is channeling my inner Pat Butcher, like a little bit of leopard prints and big earrings. So I'm doing a Pat Butcher festive vibe. <laughs> Go on, get out of I love pump. your jumper. Thank you. <laughs> Yeah, oh, I should have referenced it in that last question, but never mind. <laughs> On Christmas Eve. Um, but how, um, how have you been? Is everything good? Oh, it's been a really good year. Um, lots of press junkets, lots of movies coming out. I think the most interesting interview that I did this year was with um, Ray Liotta, the star of uh, Goodfellas. And he ended up interviewing me when I was trying to speak to him about a movie that he had out. And it was hilarious so it's, it's definitely been a fun interesting year and an improvement on last year and it's great to see you again for this quiz a year later oh that's fantastic oh i'm so glad you've been out and about there's a little bit of a lag with your internet but hopefully that will uh uh sort itself out so um it's great to see and i'm glad that you've been any more just throw, throw another couple of names at us go on because we're all sticklers for uh throw a couple of other names oh Okay, so the recent Will Smith movie that came out, King Richard, that was out a few weeks ago. I interviewed Angelou Ellis, who played uh, the mother of Venus and Serena Williams, uh, the musical In the Heights, Warner Brothers movie that came out in summer. It's It's been a really busy year for, for movies. There's been a slate of great content that's come out in the cinema, so, so it's been really fun just being back and doing some great interviews again. That's amazing. Final thing. Do you go and see the movies? Like, do you get to see them uh, before, like to research or after? I do. So sometimes I go to like a really small screening with, you know, maybe two or three other journalists in the back of Soho. Uh, and then other times you get to go to a premiere. I can't remember. I think it was Paw Patrol. Uh, there was a big takeover at Leicester Square. Uh, they had a huge premiere and that was so much fun. So it was good to kind of be there on the day and see the characters and, and have like loads of fun with all the activities that they had going on. So being back into, we're slowly getting back to, to normality. Oh, that's fantastic. Well, listen, it's so lovely to see you and I'll, I'll throw it over to you and you can uh, introduce our first guest. Excellent. Yeah, so let's kick it off with our first question from Christmas Future. The first question in this round comes from Samina Ali Khan, presenter at ITV News Central. How many hosts of The Great British Bake Off have there been? Uh, okay, I think what we should, so... What we should do is, uh, just sorry to interrupt you, uh, this is not including the judges, just to be, to be clear, how many hosts? Yeah, so question 13 of Christmas Future Rounds. How many hosts of The Great British Bake Off have there been? Let's start that timer. That's fine. Did you see I it this year? I love the Great British Bake Off. Um, I caught bits of it. I mean, are you, it's a season for baking as well. Are you a baker? No judgment. I... You're not to say so. <laughs> no, my wife's the baker. She makes insane cakes, but I just tell, like, uh, give me a task and I'll do it. Would you want me to need something? I'll need it. Yeah. Excellent. Well, you've got the best job of eating the baked goods. Exactly. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so that time is up. So the question again, how many hosts of the Great British Bake Off have there been? Let's get the answer. And the answer is five. 
First it was Mel and Sue, then we had Sandy Toxvig and Noel Fielding, and currently it is Noel Fielding and Matt Lucas. So five in total, and I am available if they need another one. <laughs> Me too. I put myself forward. <laughs> Hugely that's successful show, 12 seasons. They've done so well. That's amazing. In this country, 12 seasons? I believe so. That's amazing. By the way, Steve Wynn wants to know where you get your shelves from. It's called a cartel bookshelf uh, with a K. No connection to anything dodgy. And um, I bought it on Amazon. Fantastic. There you go. So not only are we, uh, you know, quizzers, but we, we, it's a public service as well. So that's great. Wonderful. There we go. Christmas ideas there. <laughs> Christmas gift ideas. Okay. So Christmas is always full of repeats and we are no different as we welcome back familiar faces from our previous rounds. First, it's Yorkshire's vet, Peter Wright. Many of you will know that I worked with Alf White, James Herriot himself. Channel Five's All Creatures Great and Small will be back on our screens with a Christmas special this year. Your question is, who plays James Herriot in the Channel 5 series. Okay, so let's hear that one again. Tricky one there. Channel 5 series, all creatures, great and small, will be back on our screens with a Christmas special this year. Many of you know that he was trained by the great Alf White, James Harrier himself, Christopher Timothy played him in the BBC series. But who plays James in the new current series? Let's start that timer. The only, I just remember, is it, was it Christopher Timothy when I was growing up? Was he the first one? I, don't, I, I haven't seen the new incarnation. I'll take your answer for it because I'm not sure. Basically, you're I saying you're not, you're not yeah. as old as me and that's fine. That's fine. I'm not saying anything. Timer is up, so let's find out the answer. The answer is, in the original 1980s BBC One version, it was Christopher Timothy. This time round, it's Nicholas Ralph. Yeah, so how many at home got that right? Be interested to know. Uh, how's it going in the YouTube chat, Darren? Um, Mark Brooks says, oh, she said interior fashion, lol. Um, uh, I'm not sure. We'll, we'll, uh, we'll, I think people are more concerned about your shelves and where you got, I think you've got good taste. Okay. We'll find out, <laughs> we'll find out at the end of the round. Excellent. Okay. Well, we'll hop over to the next question and here is Melissa Johns. I had the pleasure of taking part in this year's Celebrity MasterChef. In my heat, there were the brilliant Joe Swash, Katie Price, Dion Dublin and Will Kirk. But who was the eventual winner of Celebrity MasterChef 2021? Okay, oh so that question one more time. Who was the eventual winner of the Celebrity MasterChef 2021? Let's start that timer. See the good thing about my um, the good thing about my my Ross Kemp cap is that you can, it also doubles up. Oh, John, you get a deep, deep <laughs> chocolate, John. Oh, mate. Oh, that is heaven, John. Oh, wonderful. And then that kick of the lime. Oh, so, you know. We love it. We love it. And we've got the dessert references in there as well. You have to have a dessert reference. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so let's find out the answer. The answer, of course, is para-athlete and TV presenter, Kadena Cox. Right, who's just come out the, I was going to say the jungle, but it's not. She just come out the castle, hasn't she? Oh, gosh, yeah. And I was reading that she won two gold medals at the 2020 Paralympics. And her winning meal on MasterChef, I thought this was really interesting because I love food, torch salmon with tempura prawns, curry goat pie, rack of lamb, and I might pronounce this wrong, shoe o' crackling for dessert. 
And then wow. she's been busy later in the castle as well. Oh, busy amazing. Year. That's amazing. I, I find it incredible. Now. Like when they can't scr- they can barely scramble an egg when they walk in there and then they make all this unbelievable stuff at the end of it. It's incredible. And it's always on at dinner time, so I'm just extra hungry. Yeah, quite, <laughs> quite. Excellent. So on to our next question. Question. It seems only fair to bring back Shirley Houston as well. Here's another Coronation Street question for you. What year was the tram crash that killed three people in Coronation Street? And there, weirdly, is the sound of a tram in the background. Love the sound effects. So question again, what year was the tram crash in Corrie? Let's start that timer. It always seems to be about Christmas that there's some sort of unwritten rule where there has to be some sort of natural disaster, whether it's in Emmerdale, Hollyoaks, something gets blown up or set on fire or, yeah, a typhoon blows through Weatherfield. <laughs> I, I love it. You can guarantee a hugely dramatic scene at Christmas mm. in Corrie and the rest of the soaps. I love it. I love it. No matter how, you know, how much you watch it in a year, guaranteed. Tragic. Well, nothing says... Nothing says Christmas more, Letizia, than, you know, a pub being set on fire, does it? <laughs> That's hilarious. It wouldn't be Christmas without a pub on fire. I'm kind of worrying. <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. So let's find out the answer. The answer? It's a bit of a trick question because it's the same answer as the first question. 2010. 2010. I wonder how many people got that right because I remember that Christmas. That was a really right. good. That was a really good show. So I usually watch Corrie with my parents. So it's our oh, Christmas tradition. Go. We're going to watch Corrie and EastEnders and all the soaps because they're addicted. Fantastic. Uh, this this is your second. Unfortunately, I think it's your second to last question. So here we go. Oh, no. Oh, so it's my turn. I'm, I'm giving yeah. you the big build up. It says, it says, my turn, read next. Quit. No, I'm joking. Um, so uh, for the next one, we go back to uh, the host of uh, Masterminds, uh, Mr. Clive Myrie. What's the title of the piece of music composed by Neil Richardson, which has been used as the theme to Mastermind since the show began in 1972? Oh, that is a okay, good Mr. question. Murray, That's brilliant. There. What's the title of the piece of music composed by Neil Richardson, which has been the theme to Mastermind since it began in 1972? Uh, here's 30 seconds for you. Here's Darren, a what stat would your topic you. be? Oh, go on. Uh, here's a stat for you. There was one TV theme tune, which was the theme to two programmes, uh, one on the BBC and one on ITV. Do you know what the... Um, uh, what the programs were, the same piece of music? That is a really good question, and I don't know. Can I have a clue? It was, it was, um, well, it was composed by Alan Hawkshaw. It's got a name, and I can't, I can't remember the name, but it was the, the same music from Grain Chill was uh, used on Give Us a Clue. That dum dum da 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 yeah, it's unbelievable. I remember everyone at uh, home so, remembers that as well. Sorry, I got a little dance going on. That was like uh, so a nostalgia if, moment. <laughs> can, can someone find out and write it in the chat? Because it has got a name, that piece of music. If someone can quickly Google that and write that in the chat, I'd love to know. It's the piece of music. It was the same theme from Grain Chill and Give Us a Clue. That could be fantastic. Oh. Have uh, you got the answer for this one? Oh no! So <laughs> we haven't. Sorry, we haven't had the answer. Uh, the title of the, uh, the theme, the, the theme from uh, Mastermind. I never knew this. This is great. It's called Approaching Menace. That's amazing. The theme tune to Mastermind is Approaching Menace. Thank you, Clive. That's great. What a great title. I know it's very menacing. <laughs> so. This is the last question in this round. And who better than, yes, it's Fred Dinage again. What a star. 
whose first job was on British television in 1963 as a presenter and who's now been on screen for 58 years. Which old duffer's been on screen for 58 years? Give me your answers, please. Okay. Very good one there. So this person's been on screen for 58 years. The question, whose first job was in British television in 1963 as a presenter and who has now been on screen for 58 years? Let's start that timer. That's, That's almost question. six decades. And we, we've guaranteed seen this person on TV. Unbelievable. That's a great question. L very illustrious career. I know what people will be writing down. And is it right, though? Is it right or is it wrong? I know what they will be writing down. Mm hmm. Oh, be interested to find out what everyone's written. Okay, so let's find out the answer. The answer, it's me. Extraordinary, isn't it? How so little talent can go such a long way. And that, as the old duffer used to say, is how for now. How for now. <laughs> Excellent. We're not worthy. What an amazing career. Incredible. So if you wrote down Sir David Attenborough. Eh, eh. No, it's Listen, Fred thank you, thank you so much. It's really lovely to say, will you come back and do this again? It's been, it's been a lot of fun. Wonderful. Yes. And I'll also sit here with the shelves, which is a hot topic. <laughs> there you go. Well, the, um, I'm just trying to think what what are the names of your your uh, your shells they've definitely they've they've gone up another uh, few share points since we started this. <laughs> Cartel bookshelf that's K A R T E L L, -L bookshelf. Fantastic. Listen, thank you so much Letitia. Have a wonderful Christmas. All the best and we'll see you soon. And you and good luck everybody. Fantastic. And there goes Letitia in London. So let's see how you are getting on. We've done Christmas past. We've done Christmas present. That was Christmas future. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that was 18 points in total. 18. And if you could start to write down, please, and let me know how you're doing in the chat. That would be amazing. And thank you to everyone that told me the piece of music, the theme music that was used from Grange Hill and Give Us a Clue is called Chicken Man. So that's great. <clears throat> uh matt baker said he's got matt baker not the matt baker but matt baker he got three uh this time onwards and upwards um he's saying i wonder if the great bobby seagull uh watched me on the tournament uh with my fan i don't know we'll have to ask him bobby seagull name rings a bell um so let's see emmanuel seagull yes he'll he'll be on soon no, don't, don't, yeah he's very keen which is why we love him um, how else are you doing? So, uh, Kevo and Mrs. Popoff are too good. Someone say Neil Crow said that very nice. Uh, Jessica 22, one out of six for me in this round, two and a half out of 18 altogether. I'm not sure about this half Jessica, but, uh, you're doing well. You're doing well. Danielle Davis, 10 out of 18 in total. Nice one. JB's just written terrible. Uh, but with a smiley face, which is good, so is is not too uh, not too hard on himself. Um, uh, Keone says, if it's in person next year, you'll have to bring your shelves. Wouldn't that be good? Once we're all out of COVID, we can do this in a pub. That'd be amazing. Uh, Daniela, ten out of eighteen. Uh, Matt Baker said it's episodes nineteen and twenty on iPlayer, Bobby. Hopefully, you will love it. Oh, I see what he's doing. Okay, right, clever. Um, so listen, thanks ever so much. And now we go over to a very special round. This is the inaugural Bobby Siegel round. Uh, it's not posthumous. Emmanuel oh, Siegel. Um, um, is it, is it, is it uranium 238? No, 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 no. It's, uh, it's Charlotte Bronte. Oh, listen, it was, uh, you're doing well, but it was uh, the oh. javelin. That was the answer. It was the javelin. Oh, that was it. I was thinking, I, I thought shot put, maybe discus. I was getting, ah, oh. next time, next time. It's lovely to see you. Hello. Oh, it's a pleasure to be here. I think I feel Thank a bit you. underdressed Christmas wise. You've outdone me, but, but look, look at these, look at these. 
Wait. <laughs> Look at those. I've got I've got I've got oh. so many choices. Oh my word. Oh, this is now starting to hurt my face slightly. I've got I've got another one as well. Which one? Do you know, I, I love it because everyone's going absolutely above and beyond for this. This is fantastic. This is great. Damn. Just keep it like that for the next 20 to 30 minutes and you'll be absolutely <laughs> so Yeah, amazing. <laughs> How are you, Bobby? Okay. Is everything good? I'm really good. My students are at school feeling a bit nervous about times. We've got that, was it that Omicron thing back? It's not back, yeah. it's new. I mean, at least my students are learning the Greek alphabet, which is good for quizzing you... knowledge. They learn about where about is your, where about is your school that you teach at? It's in Newham in East London. I'm from uh, East Ham, hence the West right. Ham. Come on, you iron shirt. Um, right. So my students, if you're watching, you should be doing your homework. You shouldn't be watching. You should be doing your homework. Well, you're absolutely right. They should be doing their, their homework, shouldn't they? Uh, I mean, and, uh, I, I'm, I'm leaving now. I'm leaving. I'm done. I'm done. I'm it's, uh, I'm you know, it is a quiz question. How do you get rid of a Bobby Seagull? <laughs> the answer is showing that. Oh. My eyes, my eyes have been, my eyes are burning. Well, we'll my just, we'll burning. just leave, we'll just, it's a little bit chilly in here in the studio. So we'll just leave this like this for the time being. Um, no, it's great to see you. And how have things been since, um, cause you won, you Celebrity Mastermind? Yes, la last year, um, this year has been quite exciting. I have, um, we had a second series of Monkman and Seagull's Genius Adventures on telly last year. And this year we've had uh, the answer trap on channel four. So if you are liking quiz, like the tournament of Alex Scott, you can go to channel four player or any other player that you want and watch uh, the answer trap. Very good quiz. Very good quiz. Obviously I'm biased. That's I'm biased. That's amazing. When's it on? It's on, it's, it's on, um, it had series one out between April to June. So channel four player, it's a, like, it's a quirky quiz. It's a quirky quiz. Very different. Fantastic. And of course, you did University Challenge as well. That was four years ago. That was actually my um, unexpected uh, platform to, you know, for people being annoyed by me watching on YouTube and other stuff. Because, yeah, um, I did that, was it? Yeah, 2017, captain of Emmanuel College, Cambridge. Um, and I didn't even win. I actually lost to my team, my team. We lost to Eric Monkman's Wilson College team. Uh, but then since then, Eric and I formed a partnership, even though he's in Canada. Hi, Eric. We miss you. Come back because we need to film another road trip series. But I've carried on doing a lot of stuff with maths and science and education. And next year, I've got I've got a reality show I'm taking part in. I can't tell you what it is yet. It's already been filmed. It's coming out in January or Feb. And that's going to be like, is that really Bobby Seagull? Does he really do that? Bobby Seagull does some strange things. Good things, but strange. Uh that's amazing. Oh, listen, well, congrats on all your success. Isn't it amazing how one TV appearance can just take you that's that's fantastic so what just before we um we get into the, the the final round i'm just just i'm interested how so you you did well and then they contacted you as a as a result and said do you want to do more stuff yeah so like during my series eric monkman and myself both went viral on social media eric because i think at the time was perhaps the strongest ever quizzer on the show and he barked out answers brilliantly and i was a good quizzer myself so i'm a good quizzer uh, but also my, my enthusiasm my my the way i worked out things with my team where even if i got things wrong i'll be like oh that's a good answer and it was all unplanned it wasn't like oh i got a master plan i'm gonna go on universe challenge try and make a bit of drama it was just me being myself being a bit bonkers i'm kind of i'm that person that annoys you in the morning because you know in the morning you're trying to chill out at breakfast i'm that guy that people have to say bobby just just be quiet speak to us after breakfast i'm that guy i'm sorry i'm sorry darren don't never apologize. That's amazing. Oh, I'm, I'm thrilled for you. That's fantastic. Well, listen, we look forward to seeing what you got coming up in the new year for sure. Yes, I'm excited. And you're here, but we got we got the, the this is the the inaugural Bobby Seagull mm -hmm. round. I mean, listen, um, I know that you know you've done you, you know, you've done University Challenge, you've done Celebrity Mastermind, but did you ever think in a million years you would have a quiz round named after you? No, this is honestly of all the honors that I have had will have in the future. This is the one that will go on my epitaph. Oh, in cry, host. Cry, start cry, start I know, I know, I feel it. I'm dedicating this to my goldfish Speedy Gonzalez. More, 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 more the tears. That's it. Fantastic. Wonderful. Listen, it's great to see you and uh, take it away. I'll let you do your stuff. Emmanuel Seagull. Um, it's uh, Iridium. No. <laughs> No, nominate, it nominate was, Altman. Can I nominate uh, you? No, I can't. The answer, the answer is Cliff Thorburn. Ah, uh, that that was it. Sorry, I was thinking. Yeah, that. I was thinking Cliff Richards, but no, wrong Cliff, wrong Cliff. Mm, okay. Mm. 
<laughs> okay, so you've got some exciting questions for me, your host, Bobby Seagull. Not Mr. Seagull, because that's when I'm a teacher. So question number 19. It's the time of the year where we have Christmas University Challenge, the special editions. So I want you to tell me which of these four TV personalities have not won the Christmas special of University Challenge. You've got four options. It's one of the four. And that's a nice picture of me sitting on Celebrity Mastermind. I did win it. I did win it. England at World Cups. Good topic. So your question is, which of these four t TV personality has not won a Christmas special of University Challenge? So you've got A, is it Rachel Johnson? Is it B, is it Louis Theroux? Is it C, Katie Brand? Or is it D, Aid or Adrian Edmondson? Off you go, 30 seconds. We should get Are Darren your... on the Christmas University Challenge. Have I? <laughs> no, I haven't had the privilege of. I don't know what my specialist subject to be, but uh, what do you do? Interesting. Tottenham Hotspur. Tottenham Hotspur, or something like yeah, maybe spitting oh, image or something, I've, something geeky. I've got a topic for you: Tottenham Hotspur's trophy since two thousand and one. We seem to have a technical problem. We seem to have a <laughs> hold on. Oh, so that's a good topic. No revision to do. <laughs> <laughs> Not Very just a math teacher. Not just a math teacher. So um, <laughs> let's go through the wrong answers first. So firstly, if you said Rachel Johnson, no, she won it in 2012 with New College Oxford. If you said, got to get Louis through this, you're incorrect. He was a brilliant captain of Magdalen College Oxford in 2015. If you said the comedian Katie Brown, you'd have been wrong as well. She was also another Oxford team. Keeble College Oxford, 2017 winners. But if you'd gone for Vivian... Ad Aid Edmondson from um, the Young Ones. He lost. He got to. He's with Manchester. Got to the final in 2020. So Sally D is the answer. Has anyone seen that sketch? The Young Ones. Darren, have you seen that sketch before? Oh yeah, it's brilliant. Where uh, Vivian puts his foot through the floor. Yeah, it's great. And Stephen Fry's in that. And Hugh Laurie. It's great. Emma it's Thompson really as well, I think. Yeah, and that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and for uh, Adrian Edmondson, Edmondson to end up on uh, University Challenge was like a surreal. 360 yeah. moment. Amazing. That's a good question. Fantastic. It is. It is. So next, so we're going to go for question number 20, the next one. So I'm a big football fan. I support a respectable team like West Ham, unlike our host Darren who supports Tottenham Hotspur. You know, people, I guess we've got to do some things to sort of make penance for the world. And that's his, that's his penance. He's supporting Spurs. So my question is about football. Because on Boxing Day, normally, there's lots of football on telly, lots of football in the Premier League as well. So I want you to tell me who has scored the most goals on Boxing Day. Is it A, Jermaine Defoe? Is it B, Robbie Fowler? Is it C, Harry Kane, more than one foot taller than Bobby Seagull, Harry Kane? Or is it D, Alan Shearer? Off you go, 30 seconds. Now, is that a photo of you with, uh, with the great man? I know, it's, it looks like I'm kneeling down, but actually I'm probably standing in a box. Five foot, four and a half, against a six foot three man does not, it looks straight. My, my students laugh at this picture like, sir, you're small. I'm like, oh. yes, I know. <laughs> oh, what's this? Is that, is that, is that, is that what mathematical equation equals zero, Spurs? I think it's my brother, uh, elder brother's Spurs fan. So I'm gonna enjoy it. I'm gonna enjoy this one year. We're better than you. <laughs> um, so let's go through the options. So Jermaine Defoe actually went to my secondary state school. I played him against him at primary school level. Scored five against our team. And at my second oh, right. score, he was there too. Yeah, he's a very good player. Uh, played for West Ham, uh, Bournemouth, Rangers, and some other club in North London. But unfortunately, it wasn't him. <laughs> I think he had six goals. Six goals. Uh, then we've got Harry Kane, who also <laughs> plays for... He'll be soon to be playing for Manchester City. Um, he scored eight goals. And then Alan Shearer, the most... Honestly, Alan, I love you on television normally, but you've got the most boring celebration. Oh, come up with something more, more interesting. Eight goals. <laughs> what would Bobby your Fowler? celebration be then? What would What's your my celebration, celebration be, be then? Like, go, 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 go. I'm going to do that. Honestly, when I do soccer raid in about 10 years and I'm like, the penalty, I'm going to do the cacao. You heard it here first, Darren Altman. Wonderful. Thank you so much. That's great. Uh, <laughs> but all that you, you realize is, by the way, I've changed cameras because um, it doesn't matter. You realize all the quizzes are saying, we came here for TV and he's asking questions on Jermaine Defoe. This is insane. Football's on TV every year on Boxing Day. Good point. Very, very good point. Good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, they got it. 
Uh, they're they're going to hate my next question. They're going to love my next question. <laughs> so I'm an ambassador for a charity called National Numeracy. It's a bit like, you know, Ron Steele, who does what it says on the tin. National Numeracy is about numeracy for the nation. Um, and I work with the likes of Rachel Riley from Countdown on TV and Martin Lewis uh, from Money Saving Expert. And Martin Lewis actually has a brilliant show called The Money Show, which is on Christmas and it, and it helps people with Christmas bargains. So you're going to get a question to do with numbers and bargains. So here is a beautiful Richard Osman annual calendar. Look at this. Richard Osman. Actually, I took part in Celebrity Pointless coming out of New Year. Richard Osman's a legend and a hero. So imagine this calendar cost you. I got, I got so excited. I nearly lost my voice. Imagine <laughs> this calendar cost you nine pounds. Nine pounds, yeah? Write that down. And you're going to get a 5% discount in the Boxing Day sales. You're going to be watching telly. Boxing Day sales. What is the new price? No calculators. So the calendar costs nine pounds. You get a 5% discount in the Boxing Day sales. What's the new price? What is it? You've got 30 seconds. Do you know what? Whenever someone asks me a maths question, my, my I start to see like red mist. I sort of glaze over. I just, my mind works on a different, I can't do it. Can't, I admire oh. anyone that can just go 10% of this, 5% of that, yeah, 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 and tell you the answer. Yeah, it's strange. <laughs> me. No one ever does that with reading. No one says, oh my God, you asked me to read a sentence under pressure. But with maths, it's just like, Ugh. brains melt. Yeah. <laughs> but we, we we have got the answer here. To be fair, we have got the answer, and I, and and as I'm feeling in a generous mood, I'll explain the working as well. But that's important. So you work out ten percent of nine pounds, which is ninety p, and then half of that five percent, so ninety p divided by two, forty five p. Subtract that from nine pounds, and you get your Richard Osman calendar for eight pounds fifty five. And I tell you what, only half of the country can get this right. According to national numeracy, this is a sort of level of question that one in two adults will struggle, even if you give them a calculator. So don't feel so bad if you got this incorrect. You need to watch more of Martin Lewis's money show. That's what you need to do. Fantastic. Yeah? Great. Well done. It's a, good, it's a good question. Bit of maths, get maths. But now we've gone for maths, a show which has numbers, strictly has numbers. It's my favorite show i watch it every saturday with my mom i was actually on it takes two panel last year and last year i set lots of puzzles math puzzles for the strictly podcast so i'm getting maths into everywhere everywhere you go everywhere oh, you go is that your subject then that that you, you're you're a math teacher at school that is that is going to be my specialist subject i'm a math teacher at school there you go i'm going to math teacher um so we're going to strictly question i'm going to ask uh, you a question about your favorite style of dance in a second um so you got four wonderful couples here, and there's normally a Strictly Come Dancing Christmas special. But only one of these four couples has actually won that coveted Christmas glitter ball. Not the main one, the Christmas special one. So is it A, Zoe Ball and Ian Waite? Is it B, Anne Widdicombe and Anton Dubeck? Is it C, Aston Merigold and Jeanette Manrara? Or D, Sophie Ellis Baxter and Alias Skorianich? So which of these has won a Strictly Come Dancing Christmas special? Off you go. Darren, what would your what would your favorite dance style be? Um, well, before I uh, became a voiceover uh, artist and an impressionist, I used to drum. So I studied drums at the Guildhall School of Music and Trinity and Leeds. Oh, yeah. And I was I used to play a lot of jazz, jazz and big band. So maybe maybe I'd have to say jazz. Jazz. Ooh, that's I don't know. Style. I mean, as long as it didn't involve tapping, maybe like jazz. Jazz. I like that. I like that. I'm feeling. I'm feeling optimistic that Craig would give Darren more than three. We'll give you a four. We'll give you a four. <laughs> fabulous. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Darren. Darren's gonna get a fabulous. So let's go through the options that were wrong. So if you thought Zoe Ball and Ian Waite, you would. I can see why because they were actually 2005 series finalists, but in Christmas 2005 and six they were runners up. So unlucky there. Uh, Sophie Alex Be Be Sophie Ellis Pexter our kitchen disco queen uh she's actually got to the semi-final of the 2013 series but in 2014 was the christmas runner up so she was close if you thought anne widdicombe i'm sorry anne widdicombe anne widdicombe she, she's cool in some ways actually maybe she's not cool but she's cool in some ways but and not cool in some ways as well but she no 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 no, no. she came last in the christmas special but the winner in the 2018 christmas special was aston marigold and Jeanette menrara Aston Merigold, I'm still upset that he lost. 
he got robbed of the 2017 series. Should have won, should have won. I'm still seething. My mum and I are still upset. Darren, you know, my mum and I, we still talk about this every Saturday. <laughs> Aston Merigold was robbed. I'll, I'll say this, Aston, Aston Merigold and Bobby Seagull, you never see them in the same room, do you? That's all I'm saying. <laughs> you don't. Oh, yeah. yeah. You never do. <laughs> That's why. <laughs> Wonderful, uncanny, wonderful. Uncanny, You're not going to uncanny. invoice us for that, are you? <laughs> no, no, no. Um, maybe you you might invoice me for that. Psychological damage. Sorry. Oh, there you go. <laughs> um, actually, talking about my singing or lack of singing. So in my Monkman and Seagull series, I used to sing with Eric Monkman in the car. And people on Twitter would say, Eric's got a lovely singing voice. And God bless, baby, he tries. I try. I'm a trier. I'm a trier. <laughs> you are a trier. You're, yes. I'm a trier. That's what I do. Um, so that takes me on to question 23, our penultimate question and a prime number, 23, my favorite prime number. Actually, 37 is my favorite prime number. I'm, I'm misleading you, aren't I? Um, so for my Monkman and Seagull series two, which came out last year, and fingers crossed, we get to another series. COVID has put a dampener on lots of these things. We visited the Savoy Theatre in London. So in 1882, what traditional Christmas item was actually invented and first used at the Savoy Theatre in 1882. Was it crackers? Was it uh, fairy lights? Was it a Christmas tree? Or was it some stockings? Off you go, 30 seconds. Oh, that's a good question. Do you want to repeat that again for them? Yeah. So, um, at the Savoy Theatre, London, 1882, which traditional Christmas item was invented and first used on this site? Was it crackers? Not the Jacobs ones, come on. Uh, fairy hmm. lights? Not fairy cakes either. Everything could be a cake. Christmas tree, not a Christmas cake, or a stocking. There's no stocking cake, but I feel like I should invent a stocking cake. Do you cook? Um, I would say my cooking is nutritious. Have you seen the the, the Matrix films before? The first one. I've seen the first one. Yeah, yeah. They've got a scene where, where some they're making like they're eating some sort of gloop, and then they ask him, "What is this gloop?" And he says, "It contains all the amino acids needed for the body." So all my food is not like amazingly appetizing but you you get all the nutrients you need that's all that matters okay i think i think i'm getting where you're coming from i mean okay fine it'll give you everything you need nutrition wise but you you wouldn't necessarily want to eat it no you, no one's going to be inviting you back to cook uh, dinner for them unfortunately cool <laughs> so here are the answers here are the answers i feel like it's eurovision coming in and the answers from london are well they are okay if you've gone for crackers it's not Unfortunately, because crackers, there's a man called Tom Smith in the 1840s. He saw um, crackling of a fireplace and he came up with something called the bangs of expectation. So originally they were called bangs of expectation. But it's not crackers. If you got a Christmas wow. tree, no. Uh, Germany, 16th century, apparently St. Boniface, so it's not the Christmas tree. And if you thought stockings, who on earth comes up with the idea of putting dirty socks in a house? Like, honestly, Darren, the most stupidest <laughs> idea ever. Dirty socks. <laughs> I know, I know. Silly people. So I'll tell you why fairy lights. So there was a comic opera by Gilbert and Sullivan called Ayalante. And actually the owners of the Savoy Theatre, they commissioned Joseph Swan. Actually, Joseph Swan, if you're a Geordie, he invented um, lights, not Edison. Edison just had um, good marketers. So he asked Swan to create these mini lights in dresses for the lead fairies. So the lead fairies had these dresses adorned with lights, with little battery packs. And these were the first ever lights, fairy lights. So it came from ah. the Savoy Theatre. It's quite a cool little fact, isn't oh, it? Oh, fantastic. So is, is this information that you just, you carry around with you? I the thing is, I always, I'm curious. I like I like asking people lots of questions. Uh, and generally, like, I don't recall the sort of retain things first time, but if someone says something, oh, fairy lights invented at uh, Savoy Theatre, I'll then do a little bit of wiki, then maybe I'll meet someone else who's like a Christmas specialist and ask them. I think I just like, I think I talk a lot. I think if you talk a lot, you're likely to like want to retain information. <laughs> I, 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 you may say that I couldn't possibly comment, but that's really interesting. <laughs> that's fantastic. Uh, so we're on to your, is this your penultimate one? I think, yes, your I think this is the question ultimate now. question, but this is worth two points. This is worth two points, it's worth two points. So question number 24. In fact, if you, if you want to, and you're watching this in the future, you can watch a question for every hour of the day. That's how we've planned this quiz. One question for every other day. So I was a quiz expert on Channel 4 series, The Answer Trap, 30 episodes, all available for you to watch on Channel 4 Play, if you want to see 
Series 1, hosted by the brilliant Anita Rani. Uh, myself and Frank Paul, a, a amazing Only Connect champion, were setting the trap. So the way the show would work is we would set, let's say, a category, Colours of the Rainbow, and there'd be red, yellow, blue, violet, maroon. And you need to work out which are answer traps, red herrings. So maroon would have been an answer trap. But our answer trap board for you today is going to be on television. So let's bring up the board. So we've got 2019, the top 10 viewing figures for Christmas TV overnights. Um, seven of these were in the top 10. Um, I need to tell me which two are red herrings. So seven of these were legitimately 2019 top 10s, but two of these are red herrings. Off you go. Ah. Dan, you're, you're a big fan of telly on Christmas Day? Um, it really depends. I mean, to be when I was a child, yes. When I was growing up, yes. But we've got 14 people over this year. So it's going to be like head down and just getting on with it, you know, cooking, drinking. So I think probably we'll have some background music on and um, the kids can watch TV in the other room. I think that's the fair deal. You, you watch the Queen's Speech, won't you? I'll watch the Queen's speech, bless her. Yeah, I mean that's that's tradition. Everyone everyone tends to do that. But uh otherwise when you got fourteen people around, you haven't got time to sit down. No. Oh, no, no. Can't upset the Queen. Up can not upset the Queen. So the option so the way to do this is just eliminate the ones that you think are top tens, and then therefore you will be left with the ones which are the red herrings or the answer traps. So the Queen's speech obviously does really well every year. But it actually came second this year with 7.9 million overnights to Gavin and Stacey. Do you remember that? 20 yeah. Million, yeah, 11.6 million. Absolutely amazing. 11.6 million overnights. Then you think, okay, the soap operas, they always do well. Emmerdale came in at ninth place at 4.1 million. Corrie, Corrie came in uh, an eighth at 4.4 million. Then we had Mrs. Brown Boys at seventh at 4.6 million. Uh, Call the Midwife came in sixth at 5.2 million. Now you're left with just three options. You've got Finding Dory, The Gruffalo, and The Wheel. So actually, Finding Dory came and snuck in at 10th at 4 million. And actually, The Gruffalo did come fifth, but with 9 million back in 2009. So The Gruffalo was fifth. So Gruffalo is an answer trap. And actually, interesting, the 8.8 .8 million, that would have placed it number two in 2019. But in, 20, in 2009, TV view, sort of viewing figures are much higher. So it just shows you a bit of a, a worrying trend. But Let's fight back for telly. Let's fight back for telly. And the actual other answer trap was a bit of a cheeky trap by me, Darren. Cheeky trap because Michael McIntyre is always doing well on Christmas yeah. Day. And in 2019, he was actually number five on the Michael McIntyre show. But the wheel only came out in 2020. That was number uh -huh. five in 2020. That's a bit of a trick question. And if you're like, oh, I remember the wheel. Trick, trick question. I'm sorry, Darren. Sorry, viewers. Oh, fantastic. Well, that's a great question. There you go. The Gruffalo and the Wheel. Listen, thank you so much. Uh, that's your, I think that you've, you've completed all the questions. It's so lovely to, um, to have you here, Bobby. I've done it. I've completed it. Complete it, mate. You've done it. Big Christmas telly quiz. Complete it. That's there you go. You've got the Bobby Seagull. Emmanuel Seagull. Uh, 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 it's uh, New Delhi. No. no, 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 no. It's the track here. The track here. That was the answer. Oh, okay. Track here. Yeah. Next time. Listen, thank you so much, Bobby. Um, I'm sure we will see you again. And you can find him on social media. You can find him on iPlayer. Um, basically, there isn't a channel that he hasn't been on or is likely to go on in the future. So it's an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dan. It's an absolute pleasure. Lovely. We'll say goodbye to Bobby. And that is it. That is the end of the uh, RTS, the Royal Television Society Christmas Quiz 2021. And if you could write down in the chat, please, we'll check um, and see how you are doing. Uh, Mrs. Popoff, Gus Honeybun's got four out of seven for that round. Uh, well done to you. Uh, Kevo has been and uh, he's gone. He had another engagement. Um, Jessica said, I got Geordie in the last round, not Geordie Keating. So I gave myself a half. Ah, that's how she's justifying that half. Okay, cool. Um, who else we got? Matt Baker, not the Matt Baker. He got four for a grand total of 12. I'd love to do a question next year. We'll get that sorted. Uh, that's good. Uh, Danielle Davis, 14 out of 24. 
That's fantastic. Thanks for the multiple choice, Bobby. <laughs> well done. JB got five and a half uh, out of 24. Oh, well, he's saying. But, you know, you stayed and you played. That's the main thing. Fantastic. Uh, uh, Carol says, yeah, she knows her strictly at least. So well done. Uh, Gus Honeybuns Magic Christmas got a total of 18. Uh, dog food lady, dog food lady. Uh, she got seven. Uh, well done to you. Uh, is Trish still here? Is she gone? Uh, Francis Ottaway got seven and a half out of 24. Not so good, but you know, it's, you know, it's, these are tricky questions. These, they're not easy. Um, at least you'll be united when Arsenal play Bobby's West Ham tomorrow night. Uh, yes, 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 Neil. Uh, Jessica, uh five and a half out of 25 she says meh i'll take it you know these are hard questions they really are um martin lambie nairn who would have known that you know pitch spitting image in 1981 um carol got uh three and a half half for that first name uh, but had lots of laughs thank you so much carol uh any more for any more very quickly I think that's it for the moment. So listen, thank you ever so much to everyone who helped make this all work, to the various RTI, RTS centres uh, who organised the filming of questions. Thank you all to our guest, uh, Quizmasters. Uh, so many to mention. Thank you so much, people like uh, Clive Myrie, Fred Dynage, uh, all the other people from Corey, uh, Nick uh, as well. Uh, thank you to all of you. Uh, and what a fantastic range of talent. Uh, thank you to Letizia for joining me tonight. And also the uh, small but perfectly formed group that pulled uh, everything together. Damien Ashton Wellman, Phil Barnes. Thank you, Phil. Tony Campbell, uh, William Gallagher, Jade McCaffrey, and of course, Fiona Thompson. It's been an absolute pleasure. Please don't forget that this quiz will be available for you to play on uh, YouTube over Christmas. So if you had uh, a good time, uh, please do uh, tweet this out. Please do share it so we can get lots of hits. Uh, and the quiz is up on YouTube so people can play along at home. Um, thank you so much. Oh, Neil, uh, let's, let's quickly check in. Neil got 13 out of 24. That's respectable. Uh, Trish said uh, she's here, but she lost count. I think she lost count at 37. She was given it. She's so hammered, Trish. She was just giving herself points for everything. She was giving herself points for recognizing Clive Myrie. Honestly, it's a joke. Uh, listen, thank you so much. Merry Christmas to all of you. All the best for New Year. And once again, thank you to Phil for having me. And we will see you, hopefully, for another RTS quiz very soon. Merry Christmas. Oh, no.